most of us are not aware of what's rutting us. And most of us are what's called unconscious. So you have to understand that you're, you're in a matrix, essentially. And that matrix is using you like a battery to accomplish the goals of the system. So you have been programmed with beliefs that push the system. You are being exploited and manipulated by the system and they are able to inject you with energy to get you to do what they want. Now at the simplest of levels that I think anybody can understand, we look at something like consumer culture. Consumer culture is meant to jam you into a competitive paradigm to where you're always keeping up with the Joneses and you will go blow money on things you don't need and products you don't even want, living a lifestyle and working a job that is not true to who you are so that you can somehow thrive in that competitive state. You will rarely see the news showing all the great positive things that are happening in the world. Is there a lot of great positive things happening in the world? Yes. In many ways we have less death. There's so many cool technologies coming out. There's people connecting at deeper levels. The world's greatness is magnifying and in many ways problems can be magnifying, right? And that's why this is so important. There's great opportunities that are coming up. You wouldn't even, you know, 30 years ago, you might not even know about an event like this, but with the internet, you find out about it. But then again, there's also more weapons of mass destruction now. So we also have more ability to destroy ourselves now. We have more ability, everything's under a magnet. So if you look at something as simple as consumer culture and how you're being run, when you watch, say, the news, what kind of, what do you feel after you watch the news? Negative Threatened. Negativity, which then activates the amygdala. And by the way, human beings, we are wired to detect threat more than opportunity. What happens if you miss that tiger in the hedges, yeah. rustling the hedges, and you miss one threat? One threat. What happens? That's why most animals this far through evolution are very, very attuned to a threat. And so if you're watching the news and they show opportunities, you may change the channel. But if you see a threat, it's hard not to keep watching. Now what happens is that that threat energy has its own momentum. And when you get up, you're in a light level state of adrenaline, right? When you watch the news, you're not in this like horrible, horrible state. You're in this kind of light state of adrenaline. And if you're in a nice light state of adrenaline, that's infecting your behavior on an ongoing basis. Now what if you went to a party? and you're joking with your friends. Let's say that you stayed sober even, okay? You didn't go poison yourself. <laughs> so you stayed sober, you're joking with your friends, and it's just a whole night of cracking jokes, being silly, playing around, sharing energy. How do you leave that kind of environment? Uplifted. Okay, so what's also important to recognize is how that changes your perspective. One type of input makes you focus on obstacles and threats. The other makes you see opportunities. Now, if you're always focused on obstacles and threats, is, that, is there any good to that? Yes. There is some good. There are threats always on the horizon. Great. That being said, are you going to miss opportunities? Yeah. Are you in an expansive state or a contracted state? Contracted. You're in a contracted state. So a lot of people in general society, they can learn how to be filthy rich, but they're so afraid of losing their little job. They could be really happy, but they're so afraid of letting down their guard. They're, they're in a fear state and there's opportunities flying over your head left and right. And this is how the system keeps people down. It is a media system and it's a self-perpetuating loop. You're in a fear state. You look for media that feeds that fear state because you want more of whatever you have. You watch it. They, in the media, look at what the clicks are, they, try, they, they put up the story with the kitten and you don't click. Let's not just blame them guys. You gotta start with yourself. If, if everybody would clean up their own porch, the world would be a lot better. Don't just point the finger at the media. You've gotta own what you're looking at, what kind of content you're consuming. Do this challenge, like if you're someone who watches the news, do a two week like no news challenge. You ever see that? Like the no sober, what is that? Like sober October or no something, something month. <laughs> this month starting today, like the next month, the, is the no news month. Now when you hear this, you freak the fuck out. You're like, how am I gonna know what's happening in the world? You will find out. Like if it's something that is 
a huge threat, it's going to get to you. Don't worry. Like People are going to be talking about it. Everyone will be talking about it. It will get to you. But there's so much unnecessary shit, it's insane. You know, I did this actually as a counter challenge. Like, I haven't watched the news in years except for like two weeks where I'm like, I wonder what will happen if I start watching the news every day. Just on my general state, how I feel. And I wasn't watching like horrible news. I was just like, you know, like the morning show. Let me put that on. And holy fuck, the world is horrible. It's burning. We're all dying right now. It was crazy. I was like, all that's going on? How did I not know about this? And they just keep pumping new stories. And there was like a few days, they're like going back to the same story. We're here, John, here with the same story yesterday. The world's on fire and it's worse. And it's even more on fire. And I'm like, oh my God. It has no effect to you or your life, but that's your sole focus. And as you said, this is also the danger. Like, not only are we conditioned by this just in our general culture, but because it's the news that has a certain authority. In your mind, it's like, it's the news, and we're conditioned to place it on a pedestal, like, the news is up there, everyone else is watching this, so there's much more buy-in on what the news is saying than anyone else. So you see it, and you're like, holy shit, we are fucked. Then, you start looking for evidence of this. You're out, and yes, of course, there are threats, but as you said, it's like, if you're only focused on the threats, you're screwed. You think it'll keep you safe, but it does the exact opposite, right? Like you're looking for threats to be safe, but by always looking for threats, you never feel safe. And then guess what? I know someone's like, damn, right? And not only that, but you will most likely manifest more and more threats. It's like someone who's in a relationship and it's like, I'm afraid my partner's gonna cheat, gonna cheat, looking for reasons like, are there proof they're cheating, cheating? What's gonna happen? They're gonna fucking cheat. The same with the threats. If you're threat, uh, threats obsessed, you will attract more and more threats. They will come to you and you will find them. Your RES will create that reality of threats. And guess what? There's an infinite amount of threats. You will live in this reality just always. Like you're probably sitting here in this room like, oh man, oh, the cameras, the, the ceiling's going to collapse. The light, are they going to call me out on stage? Holy shit. And then you're scanning it. <laughs> That's the big threat. We're going to call you up here. We're going to call you up. The finger, whenever the finger stops, you have to come up. Some people want it. <laughs> and you're going to be humiliated. I think that, I don't know, like, you, you get addicted to the negative. Like, you know how it's like you're getting attracted to it and you're like, oh, they're going to cheat, they're going to cheat, or, oh, the world's burning, it's burning, like, you know, you get attracted to it because it's an easy option. Okay, is it easier to just be a victim? Is it easier, like, do you find yourself, like, if you explain something bad that happened to you, if you really think about how you're explaining it, it's like, oh, I got stuck in traffic and I was late for work, or yeah, she, like, she cheated on me, or he, he fucked me over. It's like you're creating a victim state of mind for yourself, right? And it feels good, okay? It feels really, really familiar. good. Yeah, it's familiar. It's that comfort zone for you, right? And so to actually like, move your brain to start thinking, oh, there's an opportunity, and I should, it's a choice that I get to do this. It's a choice that I'm late to work. It's a choice that I got up when I got up. It's a choice whether I want to go to the gym. It's a choice whether I want to go and talk to that person or not. And once you hold yourself accountable and you start putting the pressure on yourself instead of victimizing and then feeding the negativity, which is what we're talking about, you suddenly realize that everything looks different and those negative, negative experiences start to fade away. It, there's not a big like overwhelming feeling of all of that and you stop feeling like the victim you eventually get to the point where you actually cannot even relate to feeling like a victim like you will catch yourself when you start speaking oh I'm, I'm a victim here right because you're living so much in opportunity and in abundance that it literally just lifts off you really catch yourself too when you're like looking for that negativity. Like first thing you do in the morning, I can bet 95% of you do this. Reach for your fucking phone. First thing, you wake up, you're just like, Ugh. the first light you see is not the light of day, it's the fucking blue light just blasting you from your phone. And then you're scrolling through and catch what your intention is. You're not looking for good news per se. That's kind of assumed. It's like, good news, good news. What's the triggering one? What's the one that'll piss me off? This motherfucker! And then you flip out. We all do this. And then it starts our day. And you could even argue 
one, we're hooked on it and we become addicted to this state, but you could even argue that because we are also conditioned to live in this state of apathy, you feel alive. Mm -hmm. This is your purpose. It's like, where's my spike of adrenaline to feel alive? My outrage, my fear, my anger, my terror. I want to feel threatened because at least I feel fucking something. And then you're like, oh, and then you keep going around. Like the, the chain of events, like the reaction, chain of reaction starts. Fuck that person, god damn it, in the shower. Fucking shit, look at it again, god damn it. And just keep going about your day like this. It's insane. And then, again, you keep looking for more. The system feeds it to you. Like, why is it that, like, what sounds catchier? Here, like, this video will reveal the truth about success and hard work and the exact steps you need to take, but it will be a lot of work. Or, like the actual truth, the exact roadmap. Or, this person lied to you, dot, dot, dot. Truth revealed, lies revealed. <gasps> you are being manipulated. Like, <laughs> this is how good it is. Like, Julian and Tyler reveal the dot, 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 dot. Some sick content, or, how fast would you click on this? Julian exposes Tyler for the lies and manipulation. <gasps> Everyone would click on that. Notice, it gets triggered in you. That is an actual clickbait. Like, what's funny, so when people make YouTube videos, they search out the most highly um, searched for terms, right? And so because we've spent years and years, almost two decades now, building a brand, we are actually some of the higher searched key terms. And so if you're a YouTuber, one of the smarter things in your mind, perhaps, that you could do is put, you know, the truth about R.C. Tyler or Julian, you know, hopefully someday you can I get exposed too. <laughs> hopefully someday you can be exposed I too. Said, yeah. crawl, crawling out of the death pit was my second video. Crawling out of my death pit. Ah, craw okay. I mean? like crawling out of a death pit. I like that. <laughs> so, so what it is is that that clickbait, and also, remember, it hits the amygdala. People have to look for a threat before opportunity. So the video that gives you all the opportunities, less likely to look it up, but also the video that's a threat, boom, 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 boom. And then the reason this is happening is because of what's called the energetic scale. This should give you a general idea of where you're at. It's not meant to be used to self-attack. Because that's what you do, like, fuck, I'm not at the highest level. Brrr, like, no. It's just supposed to help you, just bring some awareness to what you're feeling. And it's not the emotions, but the general state. You will have to usually go through these different levels to move up. You're not gonna skip ahead to like, love. That's why no one fucking clicks on that shit. Love, you're like, yeah, I don't even, like say it's so far, it's in this other this universe. It's all testable. You can metricize this. Yes. This isn't us just being like, people won't click on love. Eh. Like you, okay, if you put the truth, the bitter truth about love, yes, you could get that. So if you're a new YouTuber or a media company, you're looking up what's being searched for and you're catering to that. Now, if you're in a horrible mood and I, and I crack a joke to you or I try to give you a hug, say you're in a really bad mood, then I even, sh here's the key, we show you that the reason that you're in a bad mood is wrong. Like maybe you thought you lost something. Oh, here it is, but you're in a bad mood. I try to crack a joke to you or give you a hug. What happens if you're in a horrible mood and someone gives you a hug? Are you like embracing them and loving the raise in emotion? You get more fear. You're like, ah, get, don't touch me, right? Say that you go to somebody who's homeless and you try to give them a hug and crack a joke if they're really mad. I don't, look, I don't know 100% what happened, but I've done feed the homeless drives. And in many cases, they, they want to stay in that because it's feeding. Now, what if also you're all laughing with your buddies? Remember we talked earlier about a party? Having fun at the party? What happens if someone comes out and they're mad about something? What do people at the party, when, when they've slowly raised the vibe, maybe through alcohol to be fair, we could get in that later how that works, but also through joking, what happens if someone comes out and they're like, oh, the news this, the news that, the, the sky is falling. How, is, how do people act if you do that? They're like, Whoa, chill. They're like, chill, bro, yeah, yeah. chill. So whatever state is being fed, you're riding the wave of that energy and you tend to want more. That's why in spiritual growth, they'll often say, this is not 100% true, but in many cases it is, high vibration energy can only track what? More high vibration energy. Low vibration energy can only track what? More low vibration energy. And while I don't believe that's 100% true, there's exceptions to anything, 
it's often true and generally true. Well, even looking just at your selective focus, like your RAS, which I hope you all know what that is. If not, Google it, RAS. Reticular activation system, okay. selective focus. Basically, right now, if there's this whole room, you can't pick up on all the details at once. So you have a selective focus. If you close your eyes right now, close your eyes, actually do it. What was red in the room? Okay, what else? What else? What else? Now open your eyes. Now, brrr, you're tuning into all the shit that's red. Red has value. Yes. Prize for the red. So you could argue, say someone who's in that state of fear, or say low vibration energy, whatever term you want, or scarcity, you know, it attracts more of that why, perhaps RAS. Like they're both looking for each other. You're looking for things to reinforce that, to keep that alive. Similar to the person who's angry, who's gonna look for more ways to keep feeding it. Consciously, you might be like, I don't like feeling angry, but there's a certain pull. You've all had it, like you're super pissed off, and then you find out like there's no reason to be pissed off. You're like, but still, fuck, 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 or stressed about something, there's a certain momentum, it takes over. This is with a current state. There's a really strong momentum, and there's part of you that is seeking out more experiences, more things, more people to keep that reality alive, to keep reinforcing it. And the other people are doing the same. Fear attracts more fear. Anger attracts more anger. And even if you move up the scale, like this is what's so interesting if you think about mainstream media. So, so much is fear, okay? But then what's right above fear? Desire. So you'll be hit with clickbait where it's like, this is what's gonna happen, this is what's gonna happen, or this is how you can get this, this is what you need. The one missing piece to your life. You wanna know the one missing piece? This item. This one missing piece, it's the one thing. And then you're just pumped with all these ads. So most people are literally just oscillating between fear, desire, fear, desire, fear, desire, and then what's above that? Anger, and then maybe, And then maybe they get to pride. And then that person, the big ego, is viewed like a god. Because yep. they have pride and ego. Something like present energy absolutely does not resonate with somebody who's in a lower vibration state. So when you're in a low vibration state, you need very heavy, frenetic energy for your palate. Just say the word your emotional palate. Say that word. Emotional palate. What do you guys think emotional palate means? What? Okay, it's what you can even taste. The emotions you can even taste. Remember when you were a kid, maybe you needed a certain type of food to taste good, and other food tasted bad. As you got older, your palate evolved. You were able to gain a taste or pleasure out of a wider range of tastes. Most people have a very unevolved and limited emotional palate. They can only experience certain emotions. If you show them peace or love or joy or even humor, if you don't gradually raise them to it, they can't experience it. So for example, when we do live events, it's not uncommon, I will hammer people with stuff about getting money, getting some, and I kind of rile them out of apathy and then later I transcend even that. Integrate and transcend, integrate and transcend. So we can move through that desire to get that money and we get fueled by that and then we can even have like, like it's like uh, like that and then it even expands out and the next thing comes out. Like a flower, it's like the little leaves come out and then the next shoot. The leaves come out and then the next shoot. But those leaves are still there. So we integrate and transcend like Russian dolls. Okay, remember, you know those little dolls, layers to it? You're a complex person. You're very complex. That's why we're trying to teach you here what is running you. We want to show you the driver's manual for your mind, your spirit, your soul, your body, and how to live life, right? Because ultimately, life is quite complex. And it's very complex because we don't even know why we're here, technically speaking. And you got to kind of create your own reason. And oftentimes, we're looking for somebody else to give us the reason. The challenge is there is so much running you. There is so much influencing you. It's hard to even know what is you. And if you think about it, about 99% of your thoughts and actions are probably consumed with, number one, fulfillment of biological drive. Say that, fulfillment of biological drives. I'm horny, I'm hungry, I'm hot, I'm cold, I'm tired. Just fulfilling that. The other is, Ego gratification, say that with me. Ego, Ego gratification. gratification. And the other is spewing out social conditioned beliefs. Say that, spewing Ego out social, social conditioning beliefs. beliefs. Have you ever heard of what they'll call it an NPC, a non-player character? Yeah. For people who kind of spew out things they just heard somewhere, but they themselves don't live it. A lot of people will be like, I believe in peace. I'm like, no, wake up, you don't. They're like, I said peace. Like, no, 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 that's virtue signaling. You're saying that to look good, but your behavior doesn't reflect it. You've got to live it. 
That peace has to reside in you and has to be something that emanates from you. You have to live it and demonstrate it through your actions. It's not about saying it so that other people can see your virtue and virtue signaling. My favorite with that, by the way, is like, everyone says like, if you had one wish, what would it be? Peace on earth. <laughs> Bullshit! Bullshit! Everyone says that because it's the first thing and you don't want to be shamed. I'm like, me too, peace. But there's all those selfish fucking <laughs> desires that come up like, one wish, a magical wish? Fuck peace on earth. Me, 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 me. Could we give you guys some harsh feedback too? Could I be a little mean? Yeah, yeah. It's hard enough in a room of higher level thinking people like this, it's hard enough to get you to move a row forward and yet every one of you will say, peace on earth. Huh. Every one of you will say, raise the human consciousness, but it's hard enough to get you even to maybe sign up for a cheap event that would help yourself. We've gotta go above and beyond to push that. It's hard enough to get you to move forward. It's some, sometimes guys will come to the front, literally, in a room of higher thinking people, guys will fight over who gets the closer seat. Yeah. And, and they're like ready to throw down. And we, ha we literally- we Diffuse it, we're yeah, like, no, 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 it's running, okay. Yeah, running a seminars company, we have to be prepared for those possibilities and contingencies. And we have to actually be able to communicate with people at a level of where they're at. You've got to meet people where they're at. But by the way, if somebody's in a lower level and you want to learn to speak their language, recognize where, because I wake up tired sometimes, feeling like crap. And so what I do is I audit how I feel. And if I was tired and feeling like crap and someone was like, move forward a row, and I'm like, Fuck off, you know, right? Because I get like that too. And then I say to myself, what would I say to me when I'm saying fuck off? And then I try to speak in that language. So all of us as teachers, whether it's making a clickbait or a thumbnail or giving initial sort of things to bait your interest in a particular topic, we're good at speaking. We want to be good at least and strive to be at speaking your language. And then as we speak your language, we want to show you maybe how to get a small goal. And then as we get you a small goal, we wanna show you there's a bigger goal, right? Because for a lot of you guys, maybe you're a little short on cash. If we can show you how to make more cash, you're like, hey, thanks for speaking my language, man. All this higher level thinking or higher paradigms is great, but I kinda of need to make a bit of cash right now. I'm kind of in pain. But if we can show you that, now you start to trust us a little bit more that, we're, that we have your interest leading you to a better direction. If we show you some dating advice, because the big feedback that I get all the time on the street when people stop me is like, man, you know, you started me with dating advice and now it's gotten to be so much more. Well, why do we show the dating advice stuff? Because if we can show you how to solve that, that's a very relevant problem at a certain paradigm. Now for us to think of a guy who's scared to go to a nightclub and talk to some people, it's hard for us to even remember what that's like. But we can go back into our minds to remember when that was scary and say, you know what, there was a point where that was really freaking scary. And you can talk like you're above it, but when you're in that club, it's actually hard and you need some help. And so what happens is that the news, the mainstream news, it infects you and feeds that. It's, it's feeding it, but the problem with the mainstream news is they don't lead you past it. They just keep feeding it. And then here's where this seminar here starts to get really interesting. Are you ready for it to get really interesting? Yeah. Are you ready for it to get really interesting? Yeah. Okay. Notice even there, if I say ready to get interesting, this has been a long night. You're tired. It's like, fuck off, right? <laughs> so, but notice it in yourself so that you can begin to, I mean, maybe I could be screaming more, right? But maybe it's because it's been a long night. So be aware of that. Notice that long night effect in yourself, okay? So where this gets interesting is this. That energy that fuels, in some cases, the mainstream news, also has its own momentum. Now, before I pick them apart, I want to say a couple things. I truly believe in being measured and balanced. What are some good things that the mainstream news does? Let's not just tear them apart. What is the original envisionment of, say, a mainstream news source? And they do do it to an extent. I want to give them credit. What do they do that's good? Because they have value. Yell some things out. They bring awareness. They bring awareness. What's that? Education. Democracy d dies in darkness is what the press would tell you. What else? What else do they do? Tell me. A check and balance on the government. A check and balance on the government. What else? What's that? Well, what's the before we get into the fake news, how about the real news? Well, I mean, look, man, if some guy's in a war zone, like if you're a reporter and you're in a freaking war zone trying to let the world know about an atrocity and people are like, fake news, you're like, fuck you, man. Like maybe there is, but I'm out here getting shot at to, sh to illuminate the world. So they're, they're, like, they're trying to help in a lot of ways, right? No one's, 
We all have selfish things we do, right? Are we all perfect? Do any of us just never lie? Are we George Washington? Do we, okay, Julian himself, okay? So everybody is, you know what I love about the show Game of Thrones, even though it's quite violent and feeds a lot of negativity? You know what I like about it? The characters are complex. Remember like Jamie Lannister? He could be a bad guy, then he's a good guy. That's real life. Real people are complex. The news is complex. So what begins to happen though is that we now see independent media and alternate media and people that are talking about raising the vibration, raising consciousness, doing better. But the energy behind a lot of the mainstream stuff is so negative, they literally want to shut them off platforms to get rid of them. And so what you're seeing is that things get better, but then that negative energy wants to drag it back down into fear. And then what'll start happening? Well, in 10 or 15 years, you're gonna see new platforms that come, maybe through things like the blockchain, where the blockchain is decentralized. And there's a, a, a ray of light in the darkness, because there's a lot of darkness around this topic right now, but there's little rays of light because we can try to suppress the truth or people seeking betterment and evil dark forces of that negative energy can come in and try to lower that. But as things become more and more decentralized, yeah, maybe someone will accumulate a lot of power, take advantage of it. But even things like blockchain or things like decentralization, eventually our destiny as a species is to raise the vibe and is to be better. And you better fucking believe that because we have so much capacity to destroy ourselves at this point that we better believe that. And let me say one last quick thing too about it. Whenever somebody has a different way of thinking and is a very different type of thinker, they often think so differently that 80% of what they say could be outlandish, but there's this 20% that is so spot on and that 80% could even be a bit offensive to some people because something's always offensive to everybody. Have a nice day could be offensive to the right person who's in a negative state. It's condescending. <laughs> so, you know, so what happens is people that think differently, maybe a lot of what they say is outlandish, but maybe there's that 20, there's that 20 percent truth. When we suppress freedom of speech, we're going to focus on that 80 percent that someone said that maybe bothered somebody, but we're not getting that 20 percent and we're stopping dialogue. And so what we're seeing now is there was the mainstream and then bigger social media platforms came out and suddenly consciousness is going up. But then what happens is again, no, no, anything that raises consciousness, it's gonna be reframed and nitpicked as bad. And how are they gonna do that? Well, if somebody releases thousands of hours of content and they happen to make a little joke, they're not a professional politician, they make a little joke that can be cut out of context. You take that, cut it out of context, spam it everywhere, and the average person in apathy doesn't have enough time to really look into what that person really said. And then when they don't look at what was really said, what happens, they wanna go with the, with the herd, because remember, if a lot of us don't even wanna move a row forward, you think the average person is looking to dig in deep and see what someone really is all about? And so we're seeing that, but I believe in our future because things like the blockchain and other things that'll come out, who knows what it'll be, will decentralize things and we're gonna see, I think this movement towards betterment is a slow moving, but consistently moving train. And that's why I stay, even though there is darkness, I stay optimistic that there is that ember of light that we can see. But remember, that negative energy, that's why I said here's where the seminar gets interesting, it has that energy itself has its own momentum. Have you ever felt that that energy, that negative energy, was running you in a time that you're upset, that you had lost conscious power and that that energy was running you. Put your hand up if you ever felt that way. Have you ever felt that you're laughing so hard in so much joy, maybe at a stand-up comedy presentation or whatever, that you couldn't stop laughing? Have you ever felt that way? Put your hand up. So notice that the energy has its own momentum. And remember we talked earlier about your energy palette, your emotional palette? We have, to, we, have to call, we have to bring to awareness what negative energy is so that when you see that fear in mainstream broadcasts, you can recognize what that is and say, maybe I don't let that in. Maybe I have a little ozone layer and when energy is coming at me, I go, wait a minute, stay present, vibe it out and choose to let it in or not. And we have to recognize this in yourself, what your energy you're carrying, but often if we see it in other people, it's a little bit easier because it's really hard to see it ourselves. 
I have it, Julian has it, Sarah has it, we all have it. This is our heritage as life on this planet. We have some of this, that's okay. We didn't transcend into Eckhart Tolle, mist of glory yet, because we're, yeah, we're not enlightened yet because we are on a journey together, right? But what we can do is show you the secrets of this, show you things that the most aware people have, and we can get you to see it in others and see the signs of it, and then get you to see it in yourself. And what can happen is, in the same way that someone gets kind of scooped up by almost this pendulum, this sort of, this sort of wave, this jet stream, say the word a jet stream, this jet stream of negativity, it's running them, they don't even know it. You remember what Jesus says? What, what's the exact quote? Um, Forgive them, Lord, for they do not know that which they do. Is that the quote? Okay, what is it? Forgive them for they, not, they know not what they do, right? They're, on a, they're, on a, they're in a jet stream of negativity. They're unconscious. They don't know what they're doing, okay? When I ask you guys to come a row forward and you don't, I say, forgive them. <laughs> it's so, okay, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a wave, right? And, and I have to forgive myself, right? Because I go into it too. So uh, forgive him for he doesn't know what he does. <laughs> so we have to become aware of it. So once we begin to see the characteristics of it, and we learn to get a palette for it, when it's coming at you, you can see it. Conversely, you can learn to see that kind of pendulum of positive energy and learn to jump on and surf it and make it so that life isn't so hard. One quote we like to use is a work ethic versus a work magnet. We want to show you how to ride that wave of positive energy and just have it pull you forward so that you can get rich, have more money, be great at meeting people. It also makes you a lot healthier in my personal experience. I've mentioned many times I don't get sick anymore because my body often is just filled with joy. There's a, there's a protection there. I go in the rough spot too, don't get me wrong. I definitely do, but it's become a lot better. So we want to teach you to recognize this. When Julian teaches things like transformation mastery, what is he doing? He's actually trying to take, he's trying to chip chunks out of that embedded negative energy and pull it out of you so you wake up and then you can ride that wave more easily so that you resonate with it, right? Because again, when you're in a negative state, you resonate with it and then you kind of ride that wave. When you're in a more positive state, you resonate with it and ride that wave. And each one will have these little, it influences these little decisions that you're making, and then it makes you take an action that tends to feed that energy. And that's why it's a loop. So we have to recognize the signs of it, the characteristics, the, the palette. We've got to build your palette and build your awareness. Does that sound like a good idea? Yes. Does that sound like a good idea? Yes. This is Julian, and welcome to Transformation Master. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest epiphanies I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level. Okay, be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after.